Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Prof Trophy and we're back again with another TSU video. This is Earth's worst balance patch. Let's get to it. We've covered a lot of topics on this channel, but pretty much all of it has been only related to the Anthropocene meta. <laughs> So today I'm kicking off a new mini-series which seeks to give an overview of how the meta has evolved across all the previous expansions. Today's episode is about the Triassic Period, an expansion sandwiched between two of the most controversial and meta-shifting balance patches the game has ever seen. Alright, so at the end of the Permian expansion came the balance patch 1.2.1, known better by its community-given name, The Great Dying. This update was heralded by one of the largest volcanic eruptions in the history of the game, which led to a cascade of other world events that drastically increased the difficulty of the game on every single server. Spawn rates for plants, water, and even essentials like oxygen were at record lows, Oof. and as a result, around 90% of the player base quit. Just before the Great Dying, the all-powerful reptile faction had split into two separate groups, the Therapsids and the Archosaurs. Each of these guilds had started to innovate in their own unique ways in an attempt to claim the top spots in the meta. And so when the balance patch hit, the Triassic Arms race began. So let's take a look at how the two warring factions innovated going into the Triassic. Therapsid players had already been experimenting with new builds before the Great Dying. They already had builds like the Dimetrodon and Gorgonopsid destroying the competition. Mobility-based builds were still in their infancy and weren't well optimized at all, but these two were the most mobile at the time. While this allowed them to body their competition at the time, it was the cooperative survivalist strategy of Lystrosaurus build that carried the Therapsid faction I'm through the balance. Here. The animal is not the... Wait, whoa, was whoa, able whoa, whoa, whoa. To the animal is not a Lystrosaurus, but rather the... YouTube, hide, 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 please. The ancestor of Lystrosaurus named Dick... D Dictodon? Its name is Dictodon. Sorry for the mistake. Through the it's okay, but Lystrosaurus mistakes. was able to deal with the extreme difficulty of the Great Dying because they could hide underground to avoid the atmospheric Aww. changes. And could Look at how cute it is, it has its teeth out. Aww. Use their tusks to access loot contained in the heavily Bro, armored plant roots. But aside from okay. them, just about every other Therapsid build Look became obsolete during the Great Dying. Fuck. After the difficulty was lowered again, the Therapsid faction put most of their evolution points into refining their most successful builds into the best versions they could be. They unlocked traits like fur, warm blood, milk, and whiskers during this time, laying the groundwork for some of the extremely important builds much later in the game's timeline. However, mm -hmm. during the Triassic expansion itself, the Therapsid faction didn't really go for any of the riskier, more wild changes to their builds. Meanwhile, the Archosaurs chose a different route. At the start of the expansion, they were heavily unfavored in the Therapsid matchup. Their only option was to try some of the more drastic changes to their game plan in order to keep up with the competition. A group of them elected to compete directly with the Therapsids, inspected to similar land tank abilities. The only difference was, these players also put a few points into aquatic abilities, such as holding their breath and diving, which gave them a place to retreat if things got tough. While those players battled the Therapsids directly, Archosaurus set two more strategies in motion. The first strategy was to put hardly any points at all into HP, and instead invest heavily into upgrades related to skin aerodynamics, which allowed them to be the second faction in the history of the game to ever unlock flight. This worked because they didn't really need HP, seeing as the only other aerial builds were lower weight class insects like beetles and grasshoppers. Their massive mobility advantage was all they needed. Around the same time, another group of Archosaurs started to use an extremely off-meta technique that had never been done effectively. They switched from quadrupedalism to bipedalism. Oh shit! Obviously, this control scheme is more. When you talk shit and then they switched from quadrupedalism. The fucking lizard gets up on two feet. What you do then, boy? What you do then, boy? Pedalism to bipedalism. Okay. Obviously, this control scheme is more difficult to master, but it does allow for some very unique builds and gives access to some extremely powerful advanced techniques. Freeing up your front limbs allows them to become more specialized for other uses: digging, grabbing, tool use. The possibilities are endless. In addition, the height advantage is really useful for countering so stealth, sweetie. especially against builds that use tall grass, shrubs, or other foliage for cover or camouflage. This one change allowed the Archosaurs to gain a massive advantage against the Therapsids, although at this point, they collectively changed their gamer tags from Archosaurs to Dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. By the end of the Triassic expansion, Dinosaurs, combined with Pterosaurs and Protocrocodilians, were absolutely dominating every server in the game. The first dinosaur builds to make waves in the meta were Herosaurus and Eoraptor. However, the real breakout came with the Coelophysis build. By trading a little of their power and HP, 
They gain traits that really put the nail in the coffin for the former champions of the Permian meta. Nail in the Raxus coffin. at this point had all but abandoned their former mains, such as the Poserius and Thranaxodon, and were now trying their best to just play small survivalist classes that could avoid the dinosaurs. However, this strategy did not save them from the new Coelophysis build. Their high mobility allowed them to keep up with these smaller builds, and their long necks and slender snouts allowed them to reach through barriers and into cover. At this point, the Therapsid Guild had dissolved, having been completely eliminated from every niche they'd once held. A few loyalists remained, though, hiding underground in trees during the day, and only daring to venture out at night. They adopted a new guild name, Mammals. Dinosaurs were easily just as overpowered and abundant as the Therapsids which had come before them. So by now you're probably wondering, why didn't the devs nerf them in the same way that they did at the end of the previous expansion? And the answer is, they tried. At the end of the Triassic, another extinction patch was rolled out, but I think the devs were afraid to use more of the harsh nerfing methods because of how drastically the player base had dropped after the Great Dying. And so instead of shaking things up in a way that would let off-meta builds steal niches away from the- what the fuck? Look at dying. And so instead of Okay, I have no problem with a raccoon yoinking shit. But why did my boy look the other way when he was taking? Look at look at the raccoon face. Shaking things up in a way that would let off meta build steel niches away from the top tiers. <laughs> what really ended up happening was that the dominance of the <laughs> He didn't even run that far away. He went like two meters and started eating that shit. That's disrespectful. By the way, raccoons are cute as fuck. Okay, when I was working in America, there was a dumpster. Well, there was a couple of dumpsters by the job we were doing, catering, you know, so we throw out food sometimes. Because, well, not really that often, but sometimes. And there used to be like a couple of raccoon. There was a raccoon family by the dumpster. I'm gonna be honest with you, I was scared as fuck out of them. Like, those motherfuckers were huge. It was like, it's like a fucking big ass raccoon. It looked cute, but I ain't gonna touch a fucking wild ass animal. I think probably choke slam the shit out of me. The dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and crocodilians was only further cemented. So while the Permian extinction was controversial because of how badly it nerfed the top builds, the Triassic extinction was controversial because of how little it That's nerfed so the top true. Builds. Starting here and lasting for the longest continuous time period, <laughs> uh, dinosaurs would own every top tier niche in the game, branching out into pack hunters, solo tanks, oof. team defense builds, and unstoppable DPS builds. We'll talk about those expansions as well as the ones that came before and after in other videos. But since we've just about covered everything about the progression of the Triassic metagame, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thanks for watching, and if you've got a time period, biome, or animal you'd like analyzed in a video, leave a suggestion in the comments of this video. Or better yet, become a patron on Patreon. Patrons work to- Okay. Uh, yeah, that was Earth's Worst Balance Patch. Interesting. No meteors and shit. Okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time, buddy. Have a nice fucking day.